This video abstract summarizes the findings from our paper, Diverse Food Sensing Neurons Trigger Adiathetic Local Search in Drosophila. By optogenetically activating distinct classes of neurons in the fruit fly, we found that multiple sensory pathways can trigger a local search that is thought to rely on a navigational strategy known as path integration. The behavior we studied was first described in the 1950s by the physiologist and entomologist Vincent de Tier. De Tier observed that when a hungry fly discovers a piece of food, it often performs a local search. That is, the fly walks around to explore the nearby area without straying too far from the food. A few years ago, our lab used Drosophila melanogaster to study how flies carry out this local search. The trajectories of flies were tracked as they explored a circular arena with a patch of food at its center. Before discovering the food, flies walked uniformly across the arena and along its edge. And after finding the food, flies indeed performed a local search as de Tier had described. In a series of experiments, our lab showed that flies are able to execute this local search in total darkness and with odorless food such as sucrose. This means that they can keep track of their position using only internal cues, a navigation behavior called idiothetic path integration. To accomplish path integration, an animal must keep track of the direction and distance it has traveled so that it can compute its position relative to its point of origin. This behavior has been well studied in the ant cataglyphus, which lives in a featureless desert environment. A cataglyphus ant will depart from its nest and wander around in search of food. Upon finding a piece of food, the ant is then able to return to the nest in a relatively straight path, demonstrating that it has integrated its location relative to its home. The neural basis of path integration is not known, but food-triggered local search in Drosophila offers a tractable model system to study the circuits supporting this navigational ability. For example, recent studies have pointed to the importance of the central complex, a highly conserved set of structures in the insect brain. To find entry points into the neural circuitry of path integration, our first set of experiments were aimed at identifying Drosophila neurons that can trigger local search. Just like our earlier study, we watched flies as they explored a circular arena with a food stimulus at its center. But now, instead of using actual food, we used fictive food. That is, whenever the fly entered the activation zone at the center of the arena, we used red light to optogenetically activate specific food-sensing neurons. For example, we activated sugar-sensing neurons in flies that expressed a light-sensitive ion channel in GR43A GAL4 cells. As expected, when we activate these cells, flies extend their proboscis, which is a well-characterized appetitive reflex. But the real question was whether activation of sugar-sensing neurons would trigger a local search. Here is a video of one of these transgenic flies exploring the arena. After some time, the fly wanders into the activation zone at the center. As you can see, upon finding the fictive food, the fly immediately stops walking, but then begins performing a local search that lasts many minutes. We can visualize this search by animating the fly's trajectory. The fly's trajectory before encountering the fictive food is shown in blue, and the fly's trajectory afterward is shown in red. These searches strongly resemble those seen in response to actual food. We found that flies repeatedly leave and then return to the food, exploring the surrounding area, but never straying far. Here is a plot of the fly's entire trajectory before and after encountering the activation zone. And here are some examples of other long-lasting searches we observed in response to activation of sugar sensors. Because these experiments are all conducted in the dark, and there are no features at the activation zone, we know that the flies must be keeping track of their location using internal cues. The local searches in these experiments are complex, each consisting of a long and unique series of runs, curves, and turns. We wondered whether the flies would be able to execute local searches within a constrained environment, where they cannot freely choose the timing, location, or angle of their turns. To this end, we constructed a maze-like arena we call Flyadelphia, because it resembles the street grid of Philadelphia. In this chamber, flies are restricted to walking down the narrow corridors, separated by the black blocks. Just like in our experiments in an open arena, we designated an activation zone in the center of the arena. As shown in this data animation, before finding the activation zone at the center of the arena, flies typically walk straight through the intersections, crisscrossing the arena from edge to edge. 
But upon encountering the activation zone, Flies performed long and elaborate local searches centered around the fictive food site. They were able to explore the surrounding blocks and find their way back to the activation zone without straying to the arena edge. Here we've plotted some of the longest searches Flies performed in the Flyadelphia arena. Vincent de Tier and others, who first described food-triggered searches, noted that hungrier flies tend to execute more persistent and elaborate searches. We hypothesize that the same might be true with optogenetically induced searches. In our typical experiments, we starved flies for two days prior to testing. In this case, we found that flies execute searches that cover hundreds of centimeters. But if flies are starved for only one day, or not starved at all, their searches are much more attenuated, covering much less distance. This shows that the internal hunger state of the animal influences the extent of their fictive food-triggered searches. When we subjected flies to more extreme starvation, we were able to trigger local searches by activating different kinds of neurons. In animals that underwent seven days of starvation, activation of OR42B GAL4 olfactory neurons was able to elicit robust local searches. These neurons detect the appetitive odor of apple cider vinegar. Activation of hunger signaling neurons in the brain also triggered local searches in seven-day starved animals. Even activating water sensors triggered searches in animals that had experienced desiccation. Together, our results suggest that local search can be triggered by a variety of food-associated stimuli. In light of this, it is likely that these distinct sensory pathways converge onto a set of brain structures that may implement idiothetic path integration. But elucidating the function of these circuits would require the ability to record neural activity in the Drosophila brain during local search. To this end, we developed a preparation to elicit local searches in a tethered fly. The fly is glued to the end of a pin and placed on an air-supported spherical treadmill on which it can walk freely. Within this virtual environment, we can create a fictive food site by optogenetically activating sugar sensors at a particular virtual location. As you can see from this animated trajectory, we found that flies were able to execute a local search within the virtual environment much like the searches seen in freely walking flies. Here are some of the longest virtual local search bouts we observed in our experiments with tethered flies. Adapting this setup for use with a two-photon microscope may permit future studies to examine how sensory stimuli, reward signals, spatial information, and memory are encoded and integrated to produce path integration. Thanks for watching.